Well, so, uh, I would I would do the the, the nickname you say, Brother Gate, but no, Brother Applegate. You uh, yes. you've had a um, distinguished uh, life, I, I guess you're supposed to say, but life on a train. They look look trains going by right now. Now what, what, those are what, what a freight, freight train. Those are freight freight cars. Because we're on freight tracks, I mean, well, well, that's well, how the whole tracks over the United States is freight. Mm -hmm. And Amtrak come into existence and different railroads had like the Penn mm -hmm. Central Station in New York and Washington DC. Amtrak pays to travel over their tracks. Mm -hmm. And the reason that they pay to travel over those tracks is that those freight cars are 200 to 150 cars long. And what they call a siding is, a siding is where it's only, it'll only hold, in some cases, 24 cars. So since Amtrak don't have no more than 24 cars and down, we have to go to the side to fit in the side so that the freight train will go by. See, because it's more than 24 of those cars, so it's much longer. And that's why sometimes the train is late because we had to go to a siding so that the freight train can pass by and sometimes the freight trains break down. Mm. Which they have what they call a detector on the tracks is from one track to the next track it used to be click, clickety clack clickety clack mm. no longer is clickety clack it's just a smooth selling rail because they weld them together mm. there's no opening between one track and another so they weld them together so it's smooth and I remember the times when I first started working for Southern Pacific that's what we now Southern Pacific is in the California. Railroad. You put it was in California. Where, where, where it's in California. I was working out of Los Angeles, California, going to Seattle, Washington, to New Orleans. Oh, oh, oh it goes oh, oh, to Louisiana. Okay, so so you go through New Mexico and all the rest of that. All the routes that they had on the schedule coming out of Los Angeles, going down to New Orleans, Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. I mean, not Fort Worth, but Houston. Yeah. And then it would go to Seattle, Washington. That was the route of Southern Pacific Railroad. So that's Southern Pacific. So how'd you get to Amtrak? So I guess the big question. How I got to Amtrak, all railroads had passenger service. The regular freight people had that. All the railroads, Southern Pacific, Northern Pacific, Burlington Northern, Santa Fe, all those railroads had passenger service, sleeping cars. It was like uh, new cars, Ford, Chevrolet, General Motors, etc. That's where that was designed. In terms of, if you can relate to this, Trailway bus service was Santa Fe Railroad. Santa Fe owned Trailway. Greyhound was owned by Southern Pacific. So when Greyhound took over Trailway, they took Trailway off the map, off the highway, and painted all the buses Greyhound. When you're up in Washington, D.C., you might see a Trailway because that's different from the East, the West Coast and the East Coast. By me taking the trip to Washington, D.C., I learned a lot about how corporations take over corporations and mergers. And that's what the railroad did. The big one took over the little one. About what, about what years was that? This was in the 70s. Early 70s? Or? Early 70s. And they had a, which they call a conglomerate, which is fiber optic cable, the guy that owned fiber optic cable started buying up railroads. So he laid fiber optic cable from coast to coast, right next to the tracks. Oh, oh no, that's because, that, okay, because the railroad, okay. So he, uh, 
there's the whole thing with the with the tracks. Uh, there's a certain amount of distance beyond the tracks that belongs to the tracks that belongs to the railroad company. So since he owns the railroad company, he can lay cable. I got you. Okay, I understand. In other words, he merged with a company because he bought. I think this, if I'm not mistaken, one railroad he bought outright and owned it, and that railroad that he bought tracks was from here to here in terms of from Los Angeles, California to Portland, Oregon from Los Angeles, California to New Orleans was Southern Pacific Line so when you got to Portland, Oregon the railroad changed to Burlington Northern so Burlington Northern used to come into Chicago and that's where you see when you catch commuter trains that's going out of Chicago which the railroad Hub is in Chicago, New York, Penn Central, Station, Penn Central, Railroad is out of the East Coast. Okay, so again, how do we get to Amtrak? I'm still sort of... So Amtrak took over the railroad. I chose to go with Amtrak. But they didn't take, they, they took over, they, but they didn't take over the, uh, the, the freight line. No, Amtrak is a, a passenger service train. The federal government supports Amtrak and give Amtrak money to operate Amtrak. But before that, under the transportation department, the highway, the trains, the ships and the planes come under transportation. So since the federal government was giving all of these different railroads money, that's when Amtrak come into existence and say, we don't have to give Southern Pacific any money. We don't have to give Burlington Northern any money. So this is where Amtrak come in. So Amtrak is a public transportation for America travel. I used to know what the word, how it was became Amtrak. All these levels, just like the Bible or whatever you, they break these words down, these letters down and form a different name. I would assume that AM was America and track would be America Track. Well, why is, is well, that not the AM Track is A M T R A K. Yeah. So all of those words has a meaning behind it. And so they put them together to have a, a conglomerate. Instead of saying make this big long word, they break it down into AM Track. But you don't remember what, the, what, what all those letters mean? I don't know what they mean because that's been such a long time ago, 30, 40 years ago, and you and I have just met, so it's hard for me to give you a true explanation of what Amtrak means. But if I went back and looked through my... Well, I could, when we finish, I can look at my smartphone and just... <laughs> yeah. so, so it's like going back, looking through my garage and pulling out information because I have a, me a menu that when the Am when Southern Pacific was selling food, they steak was 25 cents. Mm. In other words, that's how long you've been working on the railroad. How much is it? But they, they, they're getting rid of the dining cars now. I see there's a dining car here. There's but a dining car in there. Yeah, but the other lines is still... That was a snack car. Mm. See, you, this is the way it was set up when I came. There was a lounge car parlor car and a bar okay. and a bar all these different entities were functioning on the train on different railroads the southwest chief was a two type of a railroad i mean two type of dining service you had the regular people like we sitting in this car now which is called the lounge car. Oh, this is a lounge. It's not the parlor car. This is a lounge. Car. No, this is a lounge car. A parlor car is completely different because they had turquoise on the wall and copper, real copper, real turquoise, big pieces with 50, 60 pounds of big copper piece, a big uh, uh, sheets of copper, sheets of copper, and the car was designed with copper in it. Like the, Is there a reason for that? Which I don't understand. That was what they did when they went to New Mexico. They they were giving 
Mexico, the respect of saying we coming to Mexico is an Indian type of environment. Uh, so they were showing all of the dolls and all the stuff that the Indians made. Then they changed that and took all that out and made it what it is today. Before it is today, the colors that was on the train was orange, blue, and red. That was sort of like a psychedelic color that make the people that catch the train more active. So it got out of hand that they were streaking, they were doing everything on the train. I mean, I say literally everything, I mean bar none. Well, that was the 70s, okay, yeah. That was the 70s. Yeah. So when things got out of control, because it used to be 500 people per day leaving out of Los Angeles, going New Orleans or Seattle. When Nixon was in office, he had odd and even days for to buy gas. So and that, no, that was Carter. No, it wasn't. Nixon. It was Carter. I beg the well, I remember that. And I do too. No, you don't. Not the and way I remember it. What, what, all I'm saying to you is, I was a part of it, and you might have been a part of it. But in California, you couldn't buy gas if your oh, gas. Oh, I you're saying. Oh, okay, if this your, is if your, I mean, I'm, I'm from New York. If your gas, if your gas, I mean, if you had a car and your license plate read it was five, you had to get it on a, a odd day. If it was oh, six, okay. that was an even day. So I see what's up. So in other words, this started in California, and then then later on, when they had the real gas shortage under Carter, they just adopted that model that they had done already in California. Is what I'm hearing you say. Well, now I don't. I can't speak on it because I don't know about that. Okay. I'm well. only from the West Coast. <laughs> and so what happened from the West Coast, that's the only thing that I could elaborate on because I was a part of it, I saw it, I lived it, I participated in it. And so I can only give you my personal experience on what happened to me because I've saw a few things and I've done a few things. So all I'm giving you is a description of how my life was working on the railroad. In the, in the 70s, so, so now how did, how have you seen it change, evolve, or what have you want to say? They, first of all, they, people were partying too much, so they had to get rid of those, co those colors, or what happened? They had to get rid of those colors to tone it down to the colors that you see now, that you see as we look on the train, the colors. Is, what you say, toned down? Yeah, they call it muted, I think. Yeah, whatever, I don't know. And so I worked on the Zephyr, California Zephyr. It used to come out of Los Oakland, California to Chicago. But we would make crew changes in Denver. We get off the train from Oakland to Denver, and the people from Chicago would get on the train in Oakland, Denver to go to Chicago. And they change the crews the next day. Another crew come back to Denver. They get out. We get back on. So all the, when you say crew, what's a crew mean? What is that? A crew is who's running, who's operating the train. I understand. What it means like it's the engineer, the guy that's driving the train. Everybody that's on this train is a crew. Okay. Well, let me, I'm going to break it down. It's the engineer, then the conductor. The conductor sort of in charge of everything. It's an engineer, uh -huh. a brakeman. Okay. A fireman, well, I, let me start all back over. The engineer, a fireman, they'll ride in the train up front, the head end. When you get aboard the train, they are boarded too, but they're on the end, on the front end. When you get down where the passengers are, they are called conductors. If you're on a freight train, they got conductors too. But these conductors is working passenger trains instead of freight. Mm, okay. Okay, so now you got a, a real brakeman, he's on the back of the train, and then you got a brakeman in the middle to converse with the conductor that's up front. But that's but that's the for the freight trains. No, that's, that, that's for everybody. Okay, that's, okay. That's, that's everybody. Okay. They want you to qualify to operate a passenger train. If you're a people person or if you qualify to work a passenger train, then they give you a test to see if you can deal with the public. And if you, some conductors and some people can't deal with the public. So they take other jobs that satisfy their 
social media. And when they take those jobs, it's like a, a plumber. He only want to talk to you about pipes. Mm -hmm. If you got a carpenter, he just want to talk to you about wood. Oh, let's stay on the train. I don't, I don't, well, I don't this know. This is the same thing. Is what I'm telling you about the train. All of that is on the train. You, wait a second. You have, you're saying there's plumbers on the train. Yes. There's carpenters on the train. Yes. There's electricians on the yes. train. Yes. Really? Yeah. And who that's all think, part of the crew. Who you think make this table? I got you. I got you. And when the toilets stop up, who you think unstops them? Oh. When the lights go out, who you think fix them? Mm. You you don't have no license. You're not a licensed electrician. So how you gonna go uh, plug up something? And each car is is electric. There's so many volts, 250 volts per unit. So you stick your hand in. I mean, 480 units. And each car is 480 units that that engine is pumping back to the back of this car. From that engine all the way back. So we're on a rolling city here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the crew, who, has a, who else is on the crew? Well, you got cooks, mm -hmm. waiters, porters, and supervisors. Supervisors. Yes. Okay. The porters, the, those are the people that clean the train? Well, the porters cleans the train. Okay. The waiters serve the food. The cooks cooks the food. So they went from preparing food fresh to pre pre cooked food. Oh, this happened what in the eighties? When did this happen? No, this happened in the nineties. Oh. Because they had a full crew. They had four cooks in the kitchen, six waiters in the dining room, mm -hmm. and they had. And so each department, you had a, you know what a coon ass is? A what? A coon ass. A coon ass. A coon ass. Like a raccoon's behind? No, that's a, a breed of people that stayed out in New Orleans. That's a breed of people called yeah. coon ass in New Orleans? Yeah. <laughs> that's French and Geechee. Oh, okay, okay, okay. They're called coon asses. So Geechee from like the East Coast meets right. meets meets the meets meets, 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 meets the French. And they talk like this. Wow. And they live on the bayous, in the bayous. Right. On the swamps. Mm -hmm. Where alligators and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's from New Orleans. Around in that area. And I have to tried to get involved with one of the conductors. He said, I'm going to take you to my house and show you how we live. And he took me to his house. And I understood how he talked the way he talked. And that's what he told me. He's a mixture between French and Geechee. And when I used to watch the TV and see John Wayne and all these movie stars back south, then it all related to me. What he was telling me is true. Well, well, how, well, I don't understand. Wait, what do you mean? How does John Wayne enter this? Because know, like, they were doing slavery back there, um, and the riverboats. Mm. Remember the riverboats you yeah, used to yeah, be yeah. on TV? Yeah. Big gamblers and yeah, yeah. And, and and land. Uh, bat bat Baron, Masterson. I, I got bat you. Bat yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all that came into fold, and I was able to understand how that came to be. So all I'm giving you is my personal experience about what I actually experienced, what I actually saw, what I actually witnessed. So it's not something that I'm making up. I got you. It's just something that happened to me at a younger age. So now let, let's let's move into the because you know they said the Amtrak's in trouble now or was in trouble or I think they met that I don't know what's going on it's, it's got so political and everything like that but you retired but I mean uh, what changes have you seen since those nineties times since they got they went for the prefab food or whatever it is I mean you saw it start changing them and what, what, what how fast was that change this started changing about five years ago uh, Amtrak is like a government entity is almost like welfare, if you can understand what I'm saying. When I say well, like welfare. Well, it sounds like the a federal government, more than welfare. The federal, the federal government gives the transportation department millions of dollars every year to operate 
passenger trains. They give them millions of dollars to the airlines to operate the airlines. They put millions of dollars in the highways to keep people moving back and forth. They give millions of dollars to the boat, boat units. So now, when um, Mr. Biden, Biden was Vice President of the United States, he was supporting Amtrak. And so when Amtrak go up there for a physical year to require X amount of dollars, he supports it. Say, well, we'll give them such and such and such amount of money. It's just like any other entity that needs money from the federal government of the United States, they give them money, whether it's China, wherever it is, yeah. just like. They have their champion or whatever lobby. Exactly. Yeah. And so what really confuses people Unless you a politician and you vote for this to give the transportation department X about a million dollars, it'll go down, and that's what's going down. So anybody that is becomes the president of Net, of the United States is the president of Amtrak, mm -hmm. and that's why they cut down because Mr. Trump has said we're only going to give them this much money, and when Mr. Trump comes in to talk about what they're going to cut, they're cutting everything and everybody. Okay, so if I'm a trained person, which I am, yeah. then I need to ask my local politician whose side is he on? Is he on the train side or is the plane side or whatever? Well, but it, there's a it, big chance. It, it doesn't make a difference what side he's on. When they put the proposal together and send it to the house, he declines it and says, no, I'm not going to give you that kind of money. It's just like welfare, Section 8, and all of those places, and those unities, it's like, find another way to say you on welfare. Find another way for you to draw unemployment. Mm -hmm. So the Treasury Department gives every person that works on the railroad Social Security. Social Security is part of the railroad. The railroad gives you a, a, a pension. Social Security gives you your Social Security, the money you pay them, like Tier 1, Tier 2. And a lot of people don't know what Tier 1 and Tier 2 is. That's a form of Social Security. That's paid to people on the railroad? No, people on no. When you work, they take out Tier 1 out of your yeah, paycheck. Okay. SSI, yeah, yeah. Uh, FICA, mm -hmm. that's Social Security. No. So what happens in my years of working is I didn't know all of this until I started investigating where is my money coming from and how will I be able to know how much money I'm going to be getting. And when I investigated that, it all came back to the same circle. Social Security pays the Treasury Department and the Treasury Department sends me a check. Okay, this, that's way too complicated for me. Let me. I'm gonna have to end it here. Brother Applegate, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us, our little channel here, because we like history, you know? Well, history, to me, is something that is moving in a good direction. Because when I first started working for the railroad, as you look around and see how the blacks and whites are mingling together. Mm -hmm. At this time, you that wasn't allowed. Oh, well, maybe I won't end it here. Tell me, yeah, give me the evolution of, of, of because I know you had the Pullman Porters, and then everybody was called George or whatever have you. Yeah. In fact, your first name is George. You're, you're a Jorge. You're a yeah, George. That's right. <laughs> well, but, well, give us that. I don't, I'm not going to keep, keep going. Tell us about the history. Have you seen the the, the evolution of the of black and white or whatever you want yes, to call it. Yes, I have. What, what, what did that look like? It was, I don't know about you, if you've ever experienced this, but like I'm from Oklahoma and they used to go to a restaurant and they had black seating and white seating. Okay, hold on a second. Let me make this as a, as a part two. 